Lovely, thank you very much. Hi everyone. Um, very well pronounced as well. Thank you very much, Phil. Um, my, my name is Leanne. I am a lecturer in policing at Staffordshire University. I think policing in and of itself is an interesting role to, to be teaching and learning at the minute with lots of um, debates and, and discussions about how that should be. Um, so, I mean, that's where I'm starting from, a, a very interesting starting position. Um, so, when I talk to you today, very briefly, I'm going to talk to you about technological audience interaction tools. Um, the broad sense of, of the term of using tools um, that require some kind of engagement from a, a learner or a student, for example. Um, so these are the kind of things that I'm talking about that I've used in my own teaching that I'm going to reflect on today. Um, and, and actually kind of that there are so many of them out there so i'm being quite generic when i speak about um technological audience interaction tools as devices or technologies that require some kind of interaction from an audience um and generally speaking there are lots of positive kind of findings out there lots of positive feedback around things like kahoot oh it's exciting it's engaging um and, and kind of things even around exam scores, incre increasing um, kind of uh, grades, in-class participation and engagement. Um, and, I, and I think that point about enjoyment is a, a kind of a quite frequent one as well. Um, and it's certainly one that, that I'd have from my students. So using something like Kahoot um, as a tool for, as a quiz kind of tool with a bit of funky music, a uh, little bit exciting actually um, tends to get a lot of feedback about how exciting it is um, and, and how much students enjoy it. What we don't know about so much is how do you make that effective? How do you make that useful? Um, it, it, it's great that students might enjoy it, but actually, surely, if we're teaching and learning, it should be about a little bit more than just enjoyment. How can we take it a, a step further? Um, so, so what I'm presenting is uh, several findings based on uh, an action research piece of work that I have undertaken with my students um, with their reflective diaries around their experiences of being taught, um, of teaching and learning, as well as my own reflective diaries and peer observations of teaching. Hopefully you can hear. Please let me know if you can't. So I, th I think for, for me, the hoot and, and for, for, from the student feedback, it's it kind of very much kind of the sounds that come with it that are the exciting as well as the competition of, of having the scoreboard. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it does get a little bit annoying. You can't change the music. Um, but I think that that being in competition with some with people um, actually generate some of that excitement for students um, and, and the student feedback around that was that it helped information to get into their heads it encouraged them to revise uh, yes you can turn off the scoreboard so there are lots of different things that you can do with it um, so what I found with this one that it it was very much about that um, kind of enjoyment excitement um, but it was really this kind of sorry that's play in the background on everyone this kind of lower level thinking and, and learning really it was about encouraging them to remember certain things or encouraging them to revise or a way of them kind of um uh, or of, of us identifying what has been remembered so lots of positive feedback but actually um very low level 
generally speaking, in terms of the, the learning that, that was generated from it um, or, or what it was used for. And actually, one of the important things that I found uh, as part of this piece of work was that actually um, this excludes a lot of students as well. So for those who need a little bit more time to think about a question, to generate an answer, actually, this can be quite exclusionary, which is not what we want. Um, so for some and even for those people, it was still exciting, but they didn't get chance to actually get in. Um, and, and provide an answer. So it can be um, counterproductive to some extent. So then the, kind of moving on a little bit then um, uh, and thinking about things like Slido. So asking questions, get students or, or learners to generate a response and to think about something in a little bit more detail can be a little bit more uh, a slower paced, a little bit more reflective. Um, give students a, and learners a chance to think about what, what they're being asked uh, and to engage with information a little bit more. And actually, the, the feedback on these kinds of um, audience interaction tools was also positive. So actually, it keeps me active. It means that I don't end up floating away or I'm not sitting in my bed just... Uh, you know, closing my eyes, I'm actually being asked to do something, so I've got to engage. And actually, whilst things like Slido are, are anonymous, um, you can you can see kind of how many responses you're, you're getting in. So you can kind of have an idea of if, if everybody in the room is asleep, which is also useful. Um, so, so you can get some kind of um, level of understanding as to the learner's understanding in terms of the answers that they're providing with that one. A slightly different then, um, using something like ThingLink, um, which is kind of an immersive environment where students are clicking on different things. You can include, uh, you can even include a quiz here and, and lots of different elements. But again, this offers students an opportunity to, to kind of do this at their own pace, to click on something, to find a piece of reading, to access a web link um, and, and to actually do that at their own pace. Um, which I found was uh, students enjoyed, but also I enjoyed the idea of using this um, as a flip learning task. So actually getting them to, to think about things, generate ideas before they're coming into the classroom because they've engaged with that kind of um, virtual environment um, as well. And, and I mean, the, there's so many different things that you can put on there. And this is just one example of something that I've tried to use um, to get students thinking about a topic before they enter the classroom. So this one, I find it, and, and from, from the research, was much more about applying findings. So actually, now we've got a context that we can apply our understanding to. OK, so now I've been taught about in previous sessions, risk assessments and things like that. I can I can apply it to this context that I've got in front of me. I can also analyse what's going on here and, and provide um, a, an answer to the question. What would you do in this situation? So we are kind of moving up a little bit in terms of how I've used this and the kind of level of thinking uh, required um, and, and development in students. Then kind of kind of um, Wakelet type and there are various different kind of options that are like this as well, which can be used for students to kind of put their answers again that they've thought about in advance in a space um, and they might have a dedicated space to do that. Um, thinking about um, getting them involved again um, but also, so they're not sitting there in silence, but they're also doing this at a different level. So we, here the question is, evaluate this thing. So actually what you're doing here is getting them to evaluate rather than it's just simply being asked to recall something um, because the question is posed differently, the way that they're engaging with it is different too. Got about a minute uh, left. Thank you. Um, and then there are other other kinds of things and platforms that can be used, which I, I will um, maybe love to speak to you about another time. I didn't realise how long I could talk. 
um, get, getting students to, to think about things and actually create their own um, here, for example, interview schedules for a research project um, and putting them and sharing them. Um, again, Slido or Menti offers um, the capability to do that. And the feedback from students around this kind of um, technology was that actually they enjoyed interacting with other people's ideas and thoughts. So it's not just on a piece of paper hidden away from everyone else. Oh, yeah, that's really triggered something. Oh, now I know what what to think or um, I'm going to change my direction slightly. So that kind of socially constructed learning is really useful when they can see other people's answers on the screen, um, thoughts on the screen. And that was very much about creating their own um, interview schedule. Um, so just as very quickly, um, those fast paced quizzes can be really useful, really um, engaging, but they can exclude people who need that little bit more time. Um, and, and very often it's not what you're using, but it's how you're using it. So if you want to use it as flipped learning um, or if you if your goal is to get students to remember, great, a quiz might do that. If you want to get students or learners to evaluate, then it's thinking about you, the question that you're posing to them and how you're, you're using the tool or the task to do that. Very quick at the end, I do apologise. Um, no. Thank you very much. Please don't apologise. It's such, a, such an interesting topic and I know, um, well, I could just see from the interaction in the chat and everything like that, how, how kind of relevant this is to, to everyone. And yeah, I commend you for kind of all of the work and the different tools that you've been looking into and using with your students. Um, in your experience, Leanne, is is have you found that there's a good point during your sessions um, where it might be particularly useful to use uh, an interaction tool? So you think you have a point where you think that's good, or now it's let's save it for later, or how how would you do it? Yeah. Um, so I have used them in different ways. So I do find it useful to have kind of something at the beginning to get them thinking straight straight away or get them engaging straight away. So they're not kind of just in a, oh, she started. Um, but also because our sessions are quite long, so we, we do have two hour lectures. So actually really strategically thinking about, well, students aren't going to be able to just keep going for this long. So having kind of tasks over a break or before a break um, or part way through a session to get them really kind of getting back into the swing of things where they do have to engage um, or because it's exciting they want to engage um, and, and I think the timing of them is really important so it's not just including it here or I'm including it for the sake of including technology um, but actually including it strategically so that students are encouraged to remain engaged to re-engage when they might have disengaged um, and to keep that thinking going. And kind of leading on from that, do you have a favourite task or a go to task that you that you like to use to get that engagement that you think, yeah, that one always works or? Um, so I like the kind of um, the open text comments or word clouds so they've just got to put in a word or a couple of words because then that will get me talking and then it will get students talking and explaining them in a little bit more detail for those who want to so it offers that anonymity very often that students like and will think okay i'll contribute no one's going to tell me that was a stupid comment because they don't know who's put it um, but then very often when i say oh do you want to expand on that that's great once they've got that confidence and they thought, oh, yeah, my idea is great, they will talk a little bit more about it. So so those kinds of um, ones that are particularly I find useful. Oh, good. And I, I really like that point where you were saying about, you know, the, the speed tasks as well, because that would certainly be something that would affect me when I, my brain just doesn't work that fast. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you just think, wow, I can't, you know, I need it to slow down a little bit for me to get the most out of it. So I think it's just making people aware of that is, is another another great point. So thank you so much. I do apologise, everyone. I, um, I've i been hogging the questions so far. I will let everyone else ask some questions going forward. Um, but yeah, OK, so unfortunately we have reached time. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it was another great talk. So many different tips. Um, if in the chat, you know, anyone else, they're using something else that we haven't kind of seen already, then feel free to stick it in the chat because this is the perfect opportunity to, to kind of find out what everyone's using and what their experiences are. So feel free to use the chat for that. Um, but OK, so moving on, um, 